and welcome to Fabula Living with Angela Jones. I'm your host, Angela Jones. Happy Sunday. Whew. It's another week already. I'm just like amazed at how fast this weekend has gone by. I need more time, Lord. I need more time. But the weekend is here, and I've got a fabulous show today. I'm so excited about today's show because it's something that we all need. We need simple meals, right? I mean, think about it. That's the question of the day, usually, is you know whether you are cooking for yourself or you're cooking for your children. What's for dinner, mom? You know, or you're thinking, you know, before you leave the work day, you know, oh gosh, what am I going to cook for dinner? I didn't take anything out. So today's show is going to help you with all of that. And this is also a really great show because it's all about one dish wonders. And you're like, one dish wonders? So what today's show is all about is dishes that can be, meals that can be prepared in one dish, right? I mean, like that is like heaven on earth to be able to prepare everything. I'm talking about your protein, your starch, your veggies, everything in one dish. Really, really, really cool stuff. And I also have a dessert that's also made, prepared in one dish that is so fabulous. Oh, you know I'm gonna give a little extra for the dessert because you know I'm the dessert girl. I love desserts, so my little sweet tooth that I have going on here, but it's amazing. Um, and I've been dying to share it with you, so I'm so excited about that. So think about it, like I said, you know, it's about time for the kids to go back to school. Um, I think most school districts are going back, at least in the Washington metropolitan area, the day after Labor Day. But hey, I mean, it's time to start getting the kids back into gear and all of that good stuff. And moms, we need a dish that we can prepare in 30 minutes to an hour. And, it can, and hey, the fewer dishes we have to clean, the better, right? So that is what today's show is all about. So what I prepared today uh, is a um, lemon, a rosemary lemon chicken orzo. Amazing. And I'm telling you, it smells so good. And the fragrances, you know, it was so fragrant in my... Uh, home when I was preparing it this afternoon. It's amazing. So this is what we're going to do. This is our plan. I'm going to show you this dish and then I'm going to walk you through how to build a, um, a one skillet meal. And then we're going to do a little side and then we're going to get to the dessert. So that's kind of our game plan for today. Okay, so let's jump in. So what I decided to do was with the with this dish is I I think as I've told you two things as far as chicken, I like chicken off the bone <laughs> preferably, and I don't like dark meat. But today, what did I do? I prepared chicken on the bone, and I prepared chicken thighs. And why did I do that? Let me tell you the, the reason why it's best to use chicken thighs. It's best to use dark meat because dark meat is going to remain a little more moist, and it's going to be um, more tender, typically, than, dark, than white meat. White meat, you can definitely tend to, and that's why a lot of people tend to not like white meat because it can kind of get tough if you don't really know what you're doing. But the beauty too about dark meat is it's more flavorful and everything than white meat. So I definitely wanted a flavorful dish and I wanted something. The other part of it too is dark meat is less expensive than white meat. So those are all things to kind of keep in mind. Because I'm thinking about this dish when I was preparing it, I had in mind that it's great for you know, families, and then also kids that are going back to college, that are going off to college, or that are currently in college and heading back for the um, semester. Something healthy that can be made and prepared in one dish is something that, you know, that can carry them a long way too. Because think about it, when you're a college student, you're not trying to make 15 million things all on the stove and have a variety of different things going on. So this is a, this one skillet kind of deal is perfect for that. So first of all, started off with the dark meat. And um, I wanted to use lemon because lemon to me is just so um, refreshing. And um, since it's summertime, so I kind of wanted to do something to kind of lean towards being, uh-oh. Okay, 
Sorry, I had a little glitch there. I'm back. <laughs> um, and I wanted to lean towards something that was, um, you know, really refreshing and had a, more of a lighter t- um, uh, flavor profile than something that you would typically have that would be heavier at different times of the year. Of course, this maybe can be made any time of the year, but I was trying to think of what I could do that was kind of a little bit on the lighter side. And the beauty of this is then with the orzo in it, you have your starch in here too. Now, I did not put a vegetable in it because I've got a side dish that's going to go really well with that. So I'm going to get to that in a minute. But I wanted to do this because I just kind of think that in the interest of time, we're all still trying to get at the end of the day, hey, you know, we want to get a healthy meal on the table, but we don't want to spend a lot of time doing that, especially during the week. So this is amazing for that. So um I'm going to hold this up so you can see the dish. And then what I'm going to do then is I'm going to um, walk you through how to build a one skillet meal and kind of, you know, as we're walking through how to build it, I'll tell you how I prepared this dish. So let me let you take a little gander at that. (gasps) So, yeah. And I'm going to plate one up. Do you you want to be my taste tester? Sure. Yay. So... We have the, do you like dark meat? I do. Okay, cool. I mean, yeah, you, he said, yeah, it's food. I like food. I like food, Miss Angela. The so, link what's that? The link never came through. Okay. So just tell me okay. 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 So, we have all of this lovely. Okay. Can we get a close up of this so that you can see the plate? That'd be great. And then it's all yours. Okay. <laughs> He's like, okay. So there you have it. Let me turn it this way. So see how nice and moist the orzo is? And orzo is great because it's almost along the line of a rice, but it's not a rice, it's a pasta, but it's really small grains, sort of like a, um, like a rice, so it's great. So I'm going to let you have that, sir. And over there. So let me tell you while while he's getting his, you know, while Dizzy's getting his plate together and all of that, and we're going to set up the, um, I'm going to set up the link because I want to share with you a um, link that I found on Bon Appetit's website because I thought, you know, hey, instead of reinventing the wheel, they walk you through exactly how to, um, Prepare it. I resent it. Let's see if we got it. Um, so, yeah. So we can kind of do that. So while he's trying to pull up the link, let me just kind of walk you through this, this dish. And then I'm going to also give you some ideas, too, of some other things that you can, you know, other proteins and things that you can use to build this dish. You can pretty much, honestly, do anything you want to. And by the way, I also prepared the pasta in this very same pan. So there wasn't any, like, I made something in another pan, and I faked you all out, and I put it in this pan. No, everything was made in the skillet, which I think is, like the bomb. <laughs> Everything literally is in the one skillet, including boiling the pasta. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to season your chicken with uh, smoked pap. I use smoked paprika. I kind of kind of did a little twist on the recipe that I saw. It looked a little bland to me, so I thought it needed to be judged up a little bit. So I kind of adapted it from another recipe that I saw. But basically, it is in the pan, I basically put in... Um, butter in the pan and of course use my handy dandy cast iron skillet and um, then what I did was I seasoned the chicken with um, smoked paprika salt sea salt pepper a little bit of garlic powder and uh, kind of you know rub that all in and then as the skillet got hot then I put the the thighs in skin down I put it in skin down so that it would get that nice sizzle on there. And then, um, you know, you kind of want to get it because you want it to get a nice sear on it. And once you kind of have that, let's call it about three to five minutes, you'll know when it's starting to look like that caramel, that kind of caramel-like color of the the skin. Then you want to flip it and do the other side. And then... um, you want to take the chicken out because we're not trying to totally cook the chicken all the way through because we are going to put it in the oven too. 
But remember, it's still in this one skillet. So we do have a kind of a two-step process, you know, on top of the stove and in the skillet and then in the oven, but it's still in the same one dish, still this one dish here. So once you take it out of the skillet, take the, remove the chicken out of the skillet and put it on a plate, then you want to um, take the, your lemon slices and then you want to sear the lemon slices so they get like a really nice little sear on them. Excuse me one minute, folks. I need to grab a something to kind of get my little self together. Hold on one second. No, 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 no breaks. No. I'm back. <laughs> it's a little warm here in uh, in, D in Washington D.C. So, ooh. so um, you want to sear the lemon so they kind of get that nice kind of um, you know. Kind of looks fancy too when you're kind of for presentation wise when you sear the lemons and then put them back on top of the chicken. So you want to sear the lemons on both sides, about one minute on each side, and then you remove them from the skillet. Add a little more butter to the pan, and then you want to, you know, take all that. You're gonna have all that yeah, that beautiful pool of grease and everything. <laughs> I shouldn't say grease. Um, oil and the fat. That's really what it is. All the fat and everything from the chicken. And you want to use that to then, you know, use that as your foundation to for all of your aromatics. So your fresh garlic, all of your herbs, all of that then goes into the pan. Then, um, once you do that, then you want to add your chicken stock and your fresh lemon juice and everything, and then your orzo. But, oh, one step back, sorry. When Before you add the water and all that good stuff, put the orzo in dry into the pan because you want to kind of get it a little toasted and then you add your liquids. It smells so good, it's amazing. Then it kind of gives you, it gives that pasta, it gives it like a nutty flavor. It's so, so good. And then you want to kind of, you know, put everything in, let it cook down a little bit, and then you put everything in the oven, and then that's when all the magic happens. So that'll kind of stay in for about 20 minutes, 25 minutes, and then it's a nice car car caramelized color, and the, um, you know, all the liquids have absorbed and all that flavors in there, and you know, like I said, and then I also add some fresh twigs of rosemary to it. It's so, so good and so simple. Everything is in the dish one dish and it's on your table in, like I said, um, in about 45 minutes. I mean, that's pretty good. You can be helping the kids with their homework or going off to do something else and the dish is done. So what we're going to do in the meantime, because I want to make sure that I have the link up for the, um, for how to actually, how to build this dish. We're gonna, you know, take a quick break. I'm gonna get that link up to you so we can kind of walk through that process. And I'm gonna let my studio audience dig into this dish. I'll be right back.
Okay, we have the link up. We're ready to rock and roll. So like I said, I said, hey, why reinvent the wheel? Let's just go ahead. And I saw that Bon Appetit had already kind of walked through the process of how to build a one skill at de- meal. Like it's your job. I love that little title of their article. It's really cute. But again, like I've told you all in the past, the cast iron skillet is your friend, people. You need to invest in one. It doesn't have to be a fancy stob like this one because that is a pricey one. Just invest in a cast iron skillet, like I said once before, and keep it seasoned and sitting on your stove so it is ready to rock and roll when you're ready to make your meals. So the first thing up, you know, there are a couple of compartments with a uh, one skillet meal and the first thing up is your protein that's the first thing you want to do you can't just toss everything in the pan it's not quite like stir fry like i was telling my engineer it's not quite like stir fry in this case because you do there are you have to kind of do things in stages so the first thing up is your protein so you want to make sure that you do your protein first and why because that's what's going to build that fat and everything that you're going to need in the bottom of your pan too and then just in terms of order you want to always make sure you cook your protein first so there's no cross contamination you want to make sure you get it at least that's why i said a good sear going on it first and then removing it from the pan and then you can continue cooking it in the stove. Now, of course, if you're cooking chicken pieces or uh, beef tips or something like that, you don't necessarily have to do the finishing part in the oven. You can really finish it all on top of the stove. But for this purpose, we definitely, because it's chicken on the bone and all of that, and it's a thick piece of chicken, we want to make sure it's cooked all the way through because we're not trying to make anybody sick. (laughs) We're not trying to do that. So proteins first. Then the next thing up is, like I said, as I was explaining, the rosemary lemon chicken orzo dish that I prepared is then you want to do the aromatics next. As you can see from the illustration, you know, like I said, you know, you're going to have that nice little pool of fat in there with all the butter and all of the drippings from the chicken all in there. Perfect time to let, you know, to go right in with your aromatics. So, you know, all of your herbs and your garlic and, you know, any seasonings that you're going to put in there next. That's what you want to do. Then you want to deglaze the pan. Now, deglazing the pan is so, so, so key. That is really the basis for your, uh, for your, actually for the sauce and everything that's going to hold everything together in your dish. So you deglaze the pan because you're going to use that fond. And fond is those little bits that you find in your skillet after you finish cooking. Do not, I repeat, do not throw those away. That's the good stuff. That's where all the love is, right there in that fond. So you want to deglaze, you want to get that, lift that fond off the pan. So you want to deglaze. You can either do... uh, you can use juice, you can use chicken stock, you can use white wine, any of those things to deglaze the pan and stir it with a spoon and get all of that goodness up when you're deglazing the pan. So good. That's where all of your flavor is, right there in that fond. When you So next up is vegetable time. So if you want to add vegetables to the dish, this is the time when you want to add the vegetables after you've deglazed the pan. So whether you're adding spinach or kale, any vegetables that you choose to use, um, peppers, onions, this is the time when you want to put all of that in. So, of course, I didn't put any vegetables in today, but never fear, we do have some greens going on. That's coming up in a minute. As soon as we run through this, I promise you, we're going to have a well-balanced meal here, I promise. Then um, after the vegetables is then when you want to put in your... um, your grain, you know, your starch, whether it's pasta or your rice or what have you, then you want to put that in at this time. Now, they kind of cheated and did pre-cooked, and you can do pre-cooked, but the whole point, though, is it's supposed to be a one-dish meal. So that's really cheating because it's, they actually say that in the article, and they know they cheated, but we're going to make it a one-dish, you know, meal. So we're going to cook even the grains even in that same um, dish. Then after you've done that, you know, then this is when you add the protein back in. And voila, meal is served. And that's your one dish, that's your one skillet meal prepared just like that. So it's amazing. So like I said, um, you can do a number of different things. You can do it with, if you wanted to do beef, if you're vegan, you can use uh, 
tofu instead if you're vegetarian and you don't want to do any you can just do this with all veg vegetables and a starch so there's so many different ways you can prepare this dish and still make it so delicious you can use salmon so many different things that you can do salmon you can do this with pork chops you can do it with um uh like i said with beef tips you could do it with flank steak the, the possibilities are endless and you can build build the meal that you want you can use different kinds of sauces if you wanted to you could do a you could add cream and make it more of a cream sauce i thought about doing that with this dish but i said no i was going to stay true to the recipe that i looked up instead of you know adding like the smoked paprika like i did i kept it pretty much the way it was presented in the um in the recipe that i found so i need to ask the audience Yay, nay, we're good. Y'all liked it? You're good? Okay, all right. All right, cool, 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 cool. But I'm probably going to play with it again and make a different variation of it. So we'll see. So as I said, next up is our vegetable. Today I wanted to do a kale salad. I have been, um, you know, kale has been like a big thing for the last few years. It's been a huge deal for everybody to, to kind of make um, to use kale instead of spinach or some of the other greens and stuff in salads. And I kind of jumped on the bandwagon maybe about a year ago and really got into kale maybe for the first time. I was like, oh, I, kinda, I really kind of like this. I got a Caesar salad instead of romaine. It was made with kale and it was really good. Um, and what the weird part about me is I don't like uh, green vegetables. Uh -uh, I don't. I don't. I just don't. <laughs> but it's so weird because I won't eat like greens or anything cooked, but I'll eat a raw kale salad or I'll eat a raw spinach salad. But I don't like any, I don't like greens cooked. It's so weird. But anyway, kale salad is really amazing. And I'm going to make a really simple kale salad for you today. So first off is I have some fresh kale that I've already um, kind of cut the stalks, you know, uh, uh, torn it up into, you know, um, pieces and um, made it kind of, you know, bite-sized pieces so it's ready for, it's ready to be prepared for a salad. So first off, the, the key with kale is, is kale, as you know, is very, it's thick. I mean, it's very like a non-porous green, like, like collard greens. So you're thinking like, how is this going to be good in a salad? So I want to show you, so, you know, everybody knows what kale looks like, but I just kind of want to show you what it looks like before you've kind of worked your little magic. So what you want to do with kale is you kind of want to massage it for a few minutes because it, to make it a little more tender. So you kind of want to like really take your time and massage it and really um you know your hands are great tools because you have all the, your, your hands hold a lot of heat you know if you bake or anything too that's why sometimes when you're baking certain things you need to put them back in the freezer like certain doughs and things like that because your hands hold so much heat but in this case it's a good thing so we want to kind of get it really like to kind of soften it up some so I'm not going to do all of this, so I'm not going to bore you all for the whole show, for the rest of the show, massage and kale. But it really is helpful <laughs> to massage it. And the thing with this is today I'm going to do, um, I'm going to keep it really simple because I've been trying to, especially in the heat, eat a little lighter. And um, so I've been, I'm going to keep it simple. You can add any kind of dressing you want, any kind of cheese you want, but I'm kind of keeping it simple today. And I'm only using um, extra virgin olive oil and um, some fresh lemon on it. And I'm also going to add some sliced almonds that I've toasted and some really um, uh, nice, plump, dried cranberries. So that's kind of what I'm going to do. So, yeah, you want to kind of massage it for a little bit. And then you want to add a little bit of your oil. And then we have some cracked black pepper. And then we have a little bit of sea salt. But like I said, like with most things, I'm going to always say, so you can definitely make this dish your own. I'm going to add a little more of the, um, kale in here to it too. We'll kind of do it in a 
phases, kind of. You can add any kind of nuts that you want. You can add cheese if you want. Like I said, I've been trying to do a little bit better here. Like all last week, this is all I had for lunch last week. Most, I think maybe one day I went out and got lunch, but I kind of just brought this in every day. And it was filling. It was really good. And it was tasty. And some days I brought it, I had a protein in it, and some days I didn't. And it was really, really good. Um... So yeah, like I was saying, no cheese. I didn't have cheese in it, which is good for me because I'm a cheese lover. But you can do par you know, shredded Parmesan. You can do feta. You can do goat cheese, whatever you kind of want to do, and any kind of nuts. But let me give you a tip about the nuts. I would toast the nuts because when you toast any kind of nuts, it's going to bring out the flavor in the nut. So toasting it is the way to go. So now that we kind of have it, oh yeah, this is perfect. Oh my God, this is great. So we kind of have it all covered with our um, give me a napkin or a towel. Actually, I think I have a towel over there or a napkin, either one. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Oh, that's okay. Got some things. So what we're gonna do is next we're gonna add some fresh lemon juice to the thank you so i have my little lemon squeezer so we don't get any uh of the seeds in there and then we're going to put that right on top of the right on top of the um the greens and again it's nice and simple and it's clean now, i'll be honest with you when is this hot Ooh, i'm really not, i really change my eating habits somewhat in the summertime because it's just so incredibly hot. So it's nice to just have something nice and refreshing and simple to prepare. So I'm going to do one more. So I, I'm using the, the juice from, I'm going to do, um, I'm going to do two. Two lemons. Oh yeah, that should be plenty. Okay. Then we have our toasted uh, almond slices, and then we have a few of the dry cranberries. And, you know, we're gonna do a little more pepper. Sorry, you can tell I love pepper, sorry. And just a hit more of the salt. And then we're going to just simply, you know, toss it all together and Let's see, I'm gonna take this and we've got a delicious, light, yet flavorful. I'm gonna add a little more of the almonds. Oh. While I'm gonna break, we're gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> yeah, I need a quick hit of this cause this is making me so hungry. And then voila. <laughs> We have our kale salad with toasted almonds and dried cranberries with a little bit of um, fresh lemon juice and extra virgin olive oil, salt and pepper. That's it. And you have a meal on the table. If you want to, you know, like I said, we're using this as a side dish for our dish today. Or you can have it as your main meal with a protein on top. Kale salad. All right, y'all. Next up is dessert. I've got a treat for you. I'll be right back.
to Fabula Living, oh, my favorite part of this show. <laughs> okay, everybody knows <laughs> over the saying, she's so dramatic. I am, but I'm excited because this has become one of my favorite desserts. I discovered this recipe about a year ago, and what it is is it's called olive oil cake. And I know people are like, olive oil and cake? It's an Italian recipe. Um, and because that's the oil that's basically used in uh, Italy is olive oil. So they have developed, you think of olive oil and you think of savory dishes. You think of using that in lieu of butter for your, um, you know, your savory dishes like we just did for the chicken or, you know, something like that. But I discovered a little over a year ago that olive oil is amazing in a cake. And the beauty of olive oil, too, is this cake doesn't, doesn't have any butter in it. So it's a little less, so since it doesn't have the butter in it, it's less fattening than um, a cake that you would typically make, a yellow cake that would have butter in it. So that's one good thing about an olive oil cake. The other thing is that olive oil is an interesting um, component in a cake because when you pair it with like a citrus, those flavors, you know, the flavor of the citrus along with the, the, the pungency of the olive oil is so amazing. And again, since this show was all about one dish wonders today, what I love about this is that you do not have to use multiple bowls. You can put everything in one bowl. Now, the first time I made it, I made it and I did it two separate bowls because it said that you should do it in one, you know, like put all the wet ingredients in one bowl and put all of the dry ingredients in another bowl. But I said, I'm going to come up with a way so we can do this in one in one bowl. And what I did was I used a large measuring cup and I put all of my wet ingredients in that measuring cup and then I whisked them all together. My eggs, my um, cream, the olive oil, obviously, and the juice. And um, I mixed all of those things together in a, me in a measuring cup. And then I made a, you know, I put all the dry ingredients in a bowl, made a well, you know, you kind of want to take all the flour and kind of put it around on the side, to, side of the bowl for the most part. And then you pour all the wet ingredients in and then you stir it. Now, the other thing that I love, love about this cake is that you don't have to use a mixer. I mean, so people, okay, America, if you cannot bake, this is the cake for you. You cannot fail with this recipe and your friends will think that you are like some master chef, some master baker, that you should be on like, you know, Food Network or something because I'm telling you this cake is that uh, amazing. It really is. And like I said, it's so simple. It's a one bowl, you know, deal here. And the other plus, see I'm giving you something extra that I didn't even, you know, I knew it was one of the amazing things that I want to share with it. But the other beauty, beautiful thing about it is that you don't have to have a mixer. So let's say you're not a, a baker and you don't have a KitchenAid mixer and you don't have all the fancy things. If you have a bowl, <laughs> a measuring cup, and a wooden spoon, you can bake this delicious, delicious cake. So it's on my website. And what I did was I did a sponsored post um, last Thanksgiving for Whole Foods. And they paid me to use some of their products, their 365 uh, products. Um, to bake, to make something. So what? one of the things that I did was the olive oil cake, but I did it and I did mandarin orange olive oil cake. So mandarin oranges, um, I didn't find any good ones in the grocery store at this time of year. So what I decided to do, let me tell you, I don't have all this gray hair for nothing. Y'all, you know, it's not just, I don't have it often. I, I earn this gray hair, every strand. And let me tell you what I decided to do to make this a little more interesting today and to really make it summery. And I've never done it, so I'm going to be tasting it for the first time here on the show. I decided to add key lime juice instead of, you know, typically I would either add, like I said, the mandarin orange, the juice from the mandarin orange, or mandarin orange juice, or regular orange juice, or lemon juice. But I thought, I've tried all the other citrus fruits. Let's try key lime. So here we are. I'm gonna bake it. Oh, and the other thing, let me tell you, is that you need, you do need to have a springform pan. A springform pan is a pan that um, has the ring around it and it has the clip and you can easily just lift it up and take it off. So, yeah, thank you. Let me show, because I wanna show you guys. I should've kept it, kept it off. Thank you so much. So this is how the cake, you know, it has a bottom, obviously, and then you wanna, <laughs> um, you, you, it's clipped 
and then you unclip it, and then there's your cake. And typically, you bake uh, cheesecakes in this. Now, the recipe says that you can do it in a regular nine inch pan. This is too big for a nine inch pan. So that's kind of only things you would know if you're a baker, but definitely you want to invest in a, in a um, spring form pan. So we're going to next put on a little bit of powdered sugar. Gotta have a little confection of sugar. And I baked this right before I came. So when I came over in the car, it was still hot. It was still warm. So you kinda wanna put a good little amount, you know, let it rain a little bit. Ah. Oops. And I'm going in. And what I love about olive oil cake is that it's so um, moist and springy. It's almost like a, it's almost sort of like a, an angel food cake in a sense, but not really. It's super duper light and moist. Uh, I didn't get a really clean, but I want you, see, can we get a close up so you can just see, look at all those nooks. <gasps> and crannies and how moist that cake is. It is so good, it's so good, so. And one piece fell, I gotta eat that. <laughs> it's still warm, mm, mm. Gotta do the chicken wing on that one, it's good. The key lime is just enough but it's not too much. Um, let me do the proper thing and eat it with a fork. Oh yeah. Typically I would put some fruit and whipped cream onto it too, fresh whipped cream, but honestly it doesn't need it. It's so, so good. Just one more, one more bite. Mm, it's good. But it's really, really a good cake. I want you to see like the, the inside to see how yummy that is. See, and it's almost in the middle is really soft. It almost, you'll think that it's not done, but it's done. It's so, it's so good and it's so simple. Like I said, even if you can't bake, you can, you can rock this. You can definitely do this. So it's really good. And for pairing purposes, this would be really great because key lime is really good with raspberries. So I would put fresh raspberries, serve this with fresh raspberries and some fresh whipped cream, bay, B. Bomb. So good. So, so, so good. So, everybody, we're set with our one dish wonders. Everything that you need with as few dishes to clean at the end of the night and still turn out an amazing, amazing meal. So, hopefully you have something that you're armed with and you can kind of, you know, rock this out this week with one of these recipes. I hope that you'll try something as far as one of the skillet dishes. What I'm going to do is I'm not going to put this on a blog just yet because I kind of want to play with this dish a little bit more. So let me tweak it a little bit more and then I'm going to make it again um, for myself. And uh, <laughs> then, I'll put, um, then I'll definitely be posting it on the blog. So look for that soonish. We'll say that. So everyone, that's today's show. I hope you learned something amazing and that you had fun along with me because I had a blast today. So have a wonderful week, and I will see you next week. Blessings.